if you are trying to apply to register your trademark, but you have no idea what the process is and you just need some type of guidance to understand, Hey, what's going on here? What should I expect? This video was made just for you. I'm going to walk you through the trademark application process step by step by step. And I'm also going to break down to you some areas where people tend to get some things confused. So if that's what you need to hear, stay tuned. Hi everybody. My name is Tammy Shiambade and I am a Houston based attorney and the host of Ask Tammy Live, where we discuss the best ways to establish your business, protect your name and keep your profits. Essentially, I'm here to help you protect what you create. And as part of that, one of the big things that I talk about is I talk about intellectual property and namely trademarks. So one thing that I find is that there's a lot of confusion out there about what to expect in the trademark application process, but have no fear, have no fear. We're going to solve that today. Day. I'm going to take you step by step through the process. So without further ado, let's step into the virtual classroom and let's check some things out. All right. All right. We are jumping right in. And as we start, I want to lay out two important things for you to understand before we take a step further. I need you to understand that there are two primary types of applications that you can submit. There's one that's called an actual use or in use application. It's also called a one a trademark application. And that is when you have a trademark. So that means like a name, a logo, a phrase, something that distinguishes you as the source of a good or service. Um, you have something that you you are already using in the marketplace to sell your stuff. So if, you know, hundreds of years ago, I'm the person who creates Nike and I've already started selling Nike to my best friends and I've been selling it. And you know, I have a storefront. I am already using this mark and I would use the one a application, but let's say instead I have an idea, but I I'm ready to, it's more than an idea. It's something I'm going to use right? I have a full intention to, I might be looking at this other application and that's called an intent to use application or a one B application. It is when you have a bona fide, that means a genuine, honest intention to use a mark or name, um, to use a mark. So that could be a business name, a logo, a phrase, whatever in connection with selling your goods or your services, right? Those two applications, understanding that difference is important because there are some slight variations in the process based on those two applications. All right. So without any additional information, let's jump into the, the process. First step that you're usually going to want to take is you are going to want to do a search. You are going to want to do a search regarding whether that mark has already been used. You're like, wait, what do you mean? Guess what? You know, I think that sometimes we think we're the only ones with these ideas, but every now and then somebody had that exact same idea and might've beat you to the punch. And in those instances, you want to know, because if you submit an application and somebody else has already been using that mark in the same category as you, then you've basically wasted your money because they're not going to let you, um, be, they're not going to allow you to be successful in registering your trademark. You're going to run into issues. So you want to do a search. Now I'll say this, it is optional, but it's like, it's, it's not the right option to choose. <laughs> you should not choose to not do a search. You should do a search. You should do a comprehensive one if possible. None of my clients have a choice because we will not do a trademark application without doing a search, without doing a comprehensive search to see what's out there to ensure that there's even a point in doing it. So it's highly recommended. Some of your online software services are on those DIY. They tell you that you're doing the search, but it's really, it's really superficial. And so they miss a lot of important things that you should be aware of. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Um, sometimes they have an option for you to pay a little bit more for the more comprehensive search. I would recommend doing a comprehensive search, just making sure you're checking all across the board based off of what could happen from the law's perspective. I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to get into too many details, but essentially there are a lot of rules that they're checking to see whether they're valid or whether you're allowed to register your trademark. It's like, if you have a name that's similar to somebody else's, you might not be able to register your trademark. Or if your trademark is what they call generic, that means it's not distinct enough. You might not be able to register your trademark. If you don't have the right permissions in some cases, you might not be able to register your trademark. So there are lots of potential rules and issues that come up, but you don't know what you're facing until you do a search. So when people come see me and they're like, Hey, Tammy, will I be able to register this? I cannot tell you anything until we do a search. So that's the first optional, optional <laughs> step. Um, but after that, the first step for some people who are not taking this wise counsel from a licensed attorney, uh, would be to submit your application to the United States Patent and Trademark Office. 
when you get to this stage, right? This is where we start to see the difference between those two applications. This is actually where you make the choice. As you're filling out the application, they're gonna ask you, are you doing, they're gonna call it filing basis. But essentially it's gonna be, are you trying to apply for a trademark for something you're already using or something you're not using? If you're already using it, it's a 1A. If you're not using it, it's a 1B, right? The price point for submitting the application is the same. Now, when you look at my chart here and you see this uh, range in terms of 250 to 350, this is not a fee that varies based off of whether you use a 1A or a 1B application. This is a fee based off of whether you use one of their applications that's more simplified, that has a lot of default language, or whether you choose something that's more customized, that allows you to really explain how your goods or service are different. I tend to use the uh, the secondary one, the standard one. That's what it's called. It's called a standard application because it provides more customization and I think it provides better protection for my clients. So we tend to use that one, but both of those are options and that's why you have the 250 to $350 mark um, when you have an option in terms of filing fees. And so, and that's per mark per class. What does that mean? That means like if I'm Nike, I have a Nike Swish sign. I have N-I-K-E, which is the name. I have um, Just Do It has a, has a slogan. I, those are three different marks. <laughs> so each one of those could be like 250 each or 350 each, but not just that for every category that I submitted in. So maybe I put it in a category for clothing. That's $250 fee. But then I also have another one for um, apps because I have a Nike app. That's another $250 for the Nike slogan. But if I have it for all three, right? So the Nike, the slogan, the name, and the logo, that's 250 times three, right? But then I have it for clothing and I have it for the application. That's actually 250 times six. But if I choose the more, um, the more customizable one, it's 350 times six. And you're like, oh my gosh, I know. This is why I should say this, because you might be like terrified when you hear all those numbers. When I meet with my clients, sometimes they have the capabilities of doing all of those trademark applications. And I'm like, this is excellent because that makes things a lot easier. We're moving like the Nike, we're moving, we're, we're, we're making boss moves. That's, I'm about that. But I'm also about strategic moves, which means, hey, right now I can't do all of that, but I still need protection because I'm putting my name out there. What's the strategy? I can help you figure out, okay, this is where I think we should we should pull our money right now, and this is where we should submit the application for now so that we can maximize our results, right? So I just want to encourage you to not be too afraid because essentially you should know that law is like your trademark and your IP work is an ongoing process and you will have a strategic plan as to how you're going to continuously acquire your IP rights. So it can take time. That's the summary of what I'm trying to say. And that happens. This is all the first stage. Now, oh, this is another big thing that I want you to know. Um, so here's the difference. The difference between the in-use application and the intent-to-use application is not in the filing fee. It's in what you submit during this application. So if you say that, hey, I have an in-use application or actual use application of 1A, then I have to submit what we call a specimen. And I've done a video on it before. I don't know which corner this is going to pop into, but I will uh, point, point that up somewhere. But you allow them or you can explain to them, right, um, you can provide proof that you've used this mark. They're going to require it. So you submit it at the time of initial submission with your actual use application. But if you have an intent to use, you don't have that proof yet because you're intending to use it, use it and they don't mind. That's fine. So that means you don't have to provide that proof upfront which can be really good if you want to make sure that you launch with a strong brand because you're like, as soon as I put this out there in the streets, everybody's going to want to copy me. I don't want to risk it. I want to make sure I'm protected before I even launch. That's why you have to do this particular application. All right. So anyways, that's that. Now, the next thing that happens after that, we submit our application and guess what we get to do for six to 12 months. We get to wait, we get to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait because the government doesn't have enough people working in this office. I mean, they didn't tell me that. That's just my assumption because there's a lot of people submitting trademark applications. So um, for six to 12 months, you are waiting. You are waiting. And what are you waiting for? You are waiting for the United States Patent and Trademark Office to assign your application to another attorney to review. But once they do that, you have entered what we call the examination period, the examination stage. And what are they doing? They are examining your application. They're looking to make sure everything is spot on, that you're not violating any rules when it comes to trademarks, that you're not copying somebody that already exists, that your mark is not generic, but it's actually distinct 
all of those things come into play that you have the right permissions. If you're using somebody's name who's living, all of that comes into play. And if they see anything, if they see a yellow flag, they see a yellow flag, they're going to send you what we call um, what we call an office action. An office action is an initial denial. And with that initial denial, they're going to be like, uh, I don't know. Have you seen this? This looks like a mistake. And it, now if you don't have a response for that office action, right, then your, your trademark application is going to die. <laughs> it's going to die. But if you have a response, if you're able to respond to it, you actually will have opportunities to, you will get three months to respond to an office action, right? And you can respond by providing, sometimes they're very specific with what they need. Sometimes they need an actual legal argument. So you might have to submit a brief. There are various things, but they will tell you where the issues are and they will give you three months to respond. And you have to respond if you want to move through the process. Now, if you move through the, that process, you respond and there are no issues, you get to go to what we call publication. In the publication stage, your mark is published in the official trademark gazette for the United States of America for one month. Why does that happen? They want to give other trademark owners the opportunity to see that, hey, this person is saying they have a trademark in this. And they want to give them a chance to say, uh, no, we are already in this space. So for one month, they will publish your trademark. Please notice that I said one to two months before that happened. So there's a lot of waiting through this process. But again, you have one month for this. And I do want you to notice two other things. There was no difference between what happens in your two applications here or here. Your intent to use application or all actual use application, no difference in this process, right? Now, if something happens over here and there's another trademark holder that says, hey, you know what, you're actually using a mark that belongs to me, well, then you're gonna have to respond to that. Now, the office action part is usually the hardest part. This, there's not usually has many um, issues that come up here, but you, if you have an issue that comes up here, you're gonna wanna get a legal professional to help you navigate that. Cause there's gonna be a way that you're gonna want to respond um, from a legal perspective. You're gonna need legal arguments. You're gonna need to assess how valid their argument is or their claim. This is kind of significant. But for the most part, most people don't have issues here. The issues that stop people in their tracks. You remember if you went to college, um, the organic chemistry for, for pre-med students? <laughs> you remember how pre-med students, they were sifted through swiftly in organic chemistry? That's what the examination period is. This is okay for trademarks. It, it, it sifts. It's like, oh, you're not actually pre-med. You're, you're not actually pre-med. You're, you're a different science. You might be business. That's what the examination period is. It's sifting through the real marks. And then this one is, is a little bit um, less people have issues here. So once you get through, though, let's say you have one month, nobody responds. Everything is fine. It's like, yay. OK, I'm moving forward. What happens next? For the people who had the actual use applications, guess what? You are registered. You get to use the R with the circle around it. I should have put it in there. I might go back and put it so if it flashes across the screen, it's because I added it during editing. <laughs> but yes, registration. And you get to use that and it's amazing. And the next step for you, like your, this is where the paths differ. Because after that, you just need to maintain your trademark. But if you had the intent to use application, it starts to be a little bit different here. Not huge differences, but a little different. What you'll get instead is the notice of allowance. So you're still pretty close to registration. You're actually only one step away. And that one step is providing the proof that they submitted at the first step here. You now have to prove that you are using the mark in commerce and you submit that proof as a statement of use right? You provide a specimen and there is a fee associated with it. You have to pay a hundred dollars. Let's say you are, you are sourcing developers or you are sourcing, uh, uh, manufacturers for your product and it's not ready yet. Have no fear. It does not mean that your journey is over. It just means that you have to request an extension and you can request a six month extension for $125. That's beautiful, but that's not all. Let's say six months pass and you still need a little bit more time. You can do it again. You can do this extension up to five times. That's three years of extensions. It's pretty powerful, right? But as soon as you're ready, as soon as you can, you can then submit the statement of use, which is your proof and voila. Once you submit the proof, you're registered. 
So you can get to the same point. This just gives you a little bit more time and it allows you to launch with greater confidence, right? Because you're not investing. See, here's the risk. The risk is that if you do this actual use application, but you haven't done all of these steps, you haven't done a search, you haven't had the United States Patent and Trademark Office tell you what's flawed, you might invest all of this money and this energy into a mark that you can't even register. That means you can't have exclusive rights to it, right? But if you do this path, the intent to use application, you don't have to invest in the, the product, menu, uh, product design or all those things until you know that you're good to go. And you're like, as soon as I'm good to go, I'm going to move swiftly. And so you save some money, you save some energy that way, honestly, because if you go this route, you could lose a lot. Um, so I personally, this is a personal preference. I think that this is, um, this is a professional preference. Professional preference is I think it's better for you to do the intent to use application because it provides you a stronger foundation for launching. It's really the strategy a lot of celebrities use when they are launching their different items. And so it's one that I like my clients to use too. It gives you greater protection because when they're dating back, when your protection starts, it's still going to be the same day right but now like even before you used it you have this protection whereas this person they have some parts of their use that were not registered okay but once you have your registration everybody has to maintain their trademark and what does that look like that looks like a um this looks like maintenance I'm trying to get that little thing to disappear but essentially after the fifth year of having your trademark after the fifth year of having, having your trademark, you have to submit some more documentation and some more money that says, hey, I'm still using it. I'm still using it to distinguish myself. And then after that, every 10th year. So every 10th year means like, so on the 10th anniversary, you're gonna have to submit something and then the 20th and the 30th and the 40th and the 50th indefinitely, forever, until you decide not to, and then you'll lose your rights. So this was pretty extensive, but let me, let's let's jump back into our our, our typical classroom. I hope this was helpful. Now that was a lot, but I really wanted you to understand the differences. And sometimes you just need a visual. Uh, I will make this visual, this visual diagram available to you via our resource hub. So if you haven't already joined that, right, when you sign up for our checklist, you will get a special bonus bonus invitation to join our resource resource hub where we have all these freebies we have free courses that are available to you um and lots of different things you might be asking Tim, why are you giving us all this stuff for free two maybe three reasons two reasons three and one reason is because i care about legal literacy i want you to know your rights i want you to know what's available to you so i want you to have some information um the second reason is i want to be in community with you you know, I want to know what's going on with you. So I want you to join my community. And the way I can do that is by giving you something. <laughs> and the third thing is when you are in community with me, if you have more issues that pop up, I can help you. So I want to be able to help you when those issues pop up. These are the reasons why I give you so much for free because I want to help. So if you want me to help you, there are different ways that you can connect with us. The website is TOS Legal. We're available on social media. But again, the main thing is I want you to get the checklist. It's the Level Up Your Business checklist. And I want you to join our community where we have a resource hub filled with things. It's growing. It's growing. There are already courses there. There are some handouts there. I'll add this to it. And I want you to get access to it. So join. All right. That's all I have for you today. Um, in the description box below, not the description box the comment section below I want you to let I want you to let me know what was surprising to you about the process what is something you didn't realize about the trademark process that you now realize and does this change anything for you when it comes to trying to register your trademark let me know all right that's all I hope you have a fantastic day bye